In our previous episode, we sailed 300 nautical miles from Malaysia to Sabang, Indonesia, and after arriving, our engine wouldn't start. You ready? The filters were clogged and were changed out. The starter motor was removed and repaired. You ready? Let's hope we don't have any more issues as we begin the 600 nautical mile sail to Padang. Wind forward of the beam. Uh, we're sailing what, five to six? Got a first reef in, full head sail, and hydrovane on point. Welcome back to my life. Man, it's so good sailing with a wind vane again. Should save a bit of power. Not that we really need to save power, but it's good to have as the backup. Some people have told us like, oh no, you got a wind vane, your boat's too big, your boat's too heavy, it's not gonna work. Mate, you just need to know how to use the hydrovane, eh? Hey? Cause it's working good. On OG Nanji, when we put the hydrovane on, we loved it so much and we sailed with it 95% of the time when we were under sail. Uh, so it was always a no brainer we are going to install it on Nanji 2. But Nanji 2 is an extra 10 tonne and an extra 10 feet so uh yeah definitely a bigger boat but look at it go it's obviously a bit of a learning curve and there'll be a lot of learning along the way as we get different sea states and stronger winds and the angle of sail as well that we're going on og we've rarely got it out of first gear and we're still in first gear now on the hydrovane and it's operating fine we're steering really well so uh, we'll see how we go with the stronger breezes we'll probably i'm assuming guessing thinking that we'll have to crank up the gears on Nanji 2 and we'll have to use it a little bit more. Uh, you know, when it was 30 knots, we still had it in gear one on OG Nanji. So I feel that because we are bigger, heavier, and faster, second and third gears might come into play now. It's all about your sails, mate. <laughs> Coming from the professional sailor here. Ah, oh, mate, you know, you just gotta get your sails right, no? <laughs> dry noodle. Yes, you are. I'm very dry. Welcome back to sailing. <laughs> I feel like I've got a desert mouth. Cloud of dust just came out of your mouth. Really? Mm. This is so good. Nice in that. Mm -hmm. Josh spent a few hours playing around with the settings on the hydrovane, seeing how the boat responded to get a better understanding on how it handles on Nanji 2. A tweak here, a tweak there, as we made ground towards the cut. making cupcakes. Oh, you can put them in here. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's a big ice cream. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> and dinner's done. I just cooked something pretty basic for dinner tonight. It's just a pasta bake with chickpeas and veggies because we're, we're on the move and oh. it'll be going on. We gotta go through the cut very soon. So, just keep it simple. And mom. Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. We're in a rush pushing to get to the cut, which is a patch of water between the islands that gets us to the west side of Sumatra. This patch of water can be gnarly with strong currents and overfalls, so passing through needs to be done at slack tide, which is in the evening in a few hours' time. We should have enough daylight to pass through safely and if timed correctly, it should be calm. We made it to the cut right on slack tide with just enough light to make the passage. No overfalls and the current was going with us. The boat felt good and Nanji ripped through the islands to the other side. The night has only just begun though with 50 nautical miles to sail to a safe anchorage. Well, it's about 3am, we've just arrived to our anchorage. So we've just dropped the anchor. Now we're about to turn the engine off, turn our engines off. Go to sleep. See you in the morning. Before we go 
get going again, stretch the legs, have a bit of a play. We've got an overnight passage ahead of us, so yeah, getting ourselves ready for that. Just under 200 miles from the last anchorage of Palau Raya as we get down to the northern islands of uh, West Sumatra Island chain. So the very first island is Similu but we'll sort of bypass that and head down into the sort of Bunyak group of islands. Heading south from Sabang you really go through a couple of different weather areas. Sabang heading south for the first 40-50 miles to that island where we rank it at Palau Raya. You're in the southwest monsoon, so you get a lot of strong winds and those strong currents that you try to avoid. So you really try to time it for that top 50 miles to avoid all of that southwest wind. And then from Palau Raya, south down to North Similu, it's very variable, it's quite calm. And it, but in saying that, you get some massive squalls through this little section. A couple of times, we've been hit with some big ones. So this year, we opted to spend the night at Palau Raya rather than continuing on, even though it was nice and calm. We just, we don't want to get hit by that massive squall sort of system again. And I wanted to do the first stretch, at least the first 50, 60 miles now in daylight as we get closer to the islands. Cause this is really the stretch where we've been hit by big squalls before. This morning as we leave, man, like, look at this doozy on the horizon. It is a Domper. We're sneaking up the inside. We've actually opted to hug the coast this time as well. Previously from Raya we'd head straight out to sea. We've done the right thing hugging the coast because mate that thing is a stomper. Okay. What you doing? I'm painting the gate. Wow. I'm painting. Good job. I love it. Oh pretty. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, You're an artist, you know. You're a really good painter. Got some paint on it? Yeah. Oh, I'm ready to go. The wagon move. Mmm. I love your painting. It's amazing. Let's go. Careful on that one. Careful on that one. Careful on that one. Everything's almost careful. Yeah. And here she comes, bit of a west northwest. Nice little breeze. 10 knots, full sail, beam reaching. Hydrovane second gear, holding it sweet. We are locked in, baby. 150 miles that way is our next port, our next destination, our next anchorage. Bit of action still out to sea. That big dog's calmed down now, which is nice. The night was spent constantly changing sails as we battled squall after squall. We sailed upwind, we sailed downwind, we had it all, topping it off with a fishing boat coming right at us that passed by our stern at first light. And it's morning again. This morning, we've got a nice tailing wind, or a nice following sea. The wind's sort of turning on the beam a bit more now, but it's still only light and there's a lot of, you know, still dark grey clouds all around us. So I'm just sitting here contemplating on our plan as we just motor along with the first reef in the main at the moment. Just waiting to see as the sun comes up, hopefully the clouds clear a little bit then and come a bit more settled and we can figure out our sail plan. Sort of got a ship a couple of miles off to our starboard here and this little fish out that's been following us off of port, but it'd be nice to open it up and put it on the back quarter. The wind's definitely a little bit coming off, coming over our back starboard quarter here, so but it's just light. It's like it's sort of the morning where you'd be like, right, oh, no, spinnaker up, except there's a whole lot of clouds around. Our asymmetrical spinnaker is pretty big, and when we made our old unicorn fart for 
OG Nanji. Uh, it just it stuck in my mind. Uh, Aaron from Core Sales, he said, only fly it in clear skies. It's a big sail. And it's it always just stuck with me. The stuff that's around us, I'll sit here and contemplate. The Spinnaker did not go up as the weather continued to deteriorate with the wind changing all sorts of directions. The squall's clouds caught up with us and gave the boat a good wash. Me as well. Yeah, pretty wet. It's quite a wet and rainy day today and it's actually highlighted a few issues that we have in the cockpit. So some of the fabric that used to be waterproof is no longer waterproof and we're getting these drips of water in through the dodger. And so hoping that we can pick up some kind of spray. I'm sure we can find something like a silicon spray or something like that just to help waterproof it and keep the rain out. So it's definitely going to rain on passage for Yosh and the guys over to Mauritius 100%. So. Yeah, we really want to make it a little bit more comfortable in here. We have been motoring for some of the morning, but the wind is just starting to pick up now. So we've got the main up and we're just going to put the stay sail up. Like it's a good consistent like 18, 19 knots. You know, we've got a first reef in the main and just the stay sail and we've boosting along at like eight knots but I'm the autopilot loves it it's handling it really well but you know we've got to keep practicing with the hydrovane so we really understand the hydrovane for this boat yeah. figure it out having like a more main up sort of tends to cause the boat to round up so when you get a bit more of a gust you are going to sort of round up with that extra power with only having a first reef in the main so uh, yeah it's a it's a good test for the hydrovane to see the reaction and and if we can really steer the boat in second gear or if you know, in these 18, 20 knots, you gotta start up, up in the gears, but um, yeah, let's have a play. Right, so we just jack it up in a third. So that's as high as gears as it can go. The thing about your wind vane, it's really important to have your sails really balanced. I guess we're not fully balanced now by having only a first reef in the main. There we go. Oh, we are really That's 25 now. Yeah. We have to put a reef in the main. Another one. It's holding up, but as we start rounding up, it just doesn't quite bring it back. You need to get on the wheel to help. So I reckon if we had the uh, second reef in, it should be right. Be like, yeah, it oversteered. As it's dropped back to 15 knots, it oversteered hardcore in the third gear. So definitely just got to balance the sails a bit better, I think. Back a little bit, 16, 18, a 120. We've got a second reef in the main, still just the stay sail. Slow down that knot, so we set it on eight knots. We're doing six and a half. See how the hydrovane goes on that. Give us your best, Cuddy. I have to help you. Seems to be holding it a bit better now. Uh, we're still gusting up to the 20s, but man, the boat just wants to take off, eh? Nanji 2. Man, we've got like, we're under a stay sail and a second reef main in 18 knots, and we're doing eight knots. We're back to seven now, but like, when we just get those gusts, we just take off, eh? So I can see why there's a bit of extra force on the old hydrovane. But, Seems to be holding it alright.
Fish on! Fish on! We always hook on when we're doing like seven and a half, eight knots and uh, we've got the wind today and of course now we've got the fish too so it's always at the most intense sailing point. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but we keep the eggs in the microwave and we've just had like a bit of a rolly moment and I think that the microwave door must have come open for them to fall out because they were... Oh, this is disgusting. Meanwhile, Nanji too does not care about broken eggs. Oh no, she's relishing in the wind and the waves, shaking off all those years she sat dormant, waiting for us on the hard stand. reached our anchorage just in time for dinner, another 210 nautical miles down. If you are enjoying our videos, please consider becoming a Patreon to help us keep filming and floating. We want to take you along for this massive journey that we have ahead, so jump on board and uh, let's do this. Yoo!